Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. Um, to the series of indoor to beach volleyball. Focusing on hitting. Focusing on hitting. So we told you, we listed out a bunch of things, the differences between beach and indoor, but today we're gonna focus on hitting in particular and a lot of the biggest mistakes indoor players make when they come to the beach. And how to fix them. Exactly, that's why you're here. For demonstration purposes, we met, went back to our old good friend, Taylor Crabb. Uh, you call him our stunt double or our uh, guy who just helps demonstrate everything. This first guy out of Honolulu, Hawaii, Taylor Crabb, let's go. And so thank you to him. <laughs> we were able to illustrate the differences between indoor and beach when it comes to hitting. The do's and do nots. We always forget to ask this, we never ask this, but could you guys please subscribe? Hit the like button and maybe write a nice little thoughtful comment. That'd be appreciated, yeah. <laughs> okay. Chapter one? Yeah, chapter one. Chapter one. Chapter one, timing versus waiting. All right, so let's talk about indoor. Indoor is all about timing. It's built around systems between the setter and the hitter. Once the setter touches the ball, you have to be on a certain step on your approach. So it's basically ingrained in your head. Once the ball is in the setter's hands, I'm going. I'm on my third step or my second step, depending on what position you play. Just timing, it's all built around timing. I think like uh, for like an outside hitter, it's on your second step, and then for a middle blocker, it's on your third step. Yeah, but like, it, it just depends on what your coach says. Yeah, I, I, that was written in your thing. I was like, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. So how that habit translates into the beach incorrectly is that you're too early because you get giddy, you get excited. Once the ball in the setter's hands, I'm going. You're in too early, the ball's behind you, and you lose your vision. That's what makes the biggest issues on the beach. Not like technically your vision, but like vision of the other court. Right. No, you go blind. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that we still struggle with. I mean, we're on our fifth year playing on the beach, and it's something that I think about on a daily basis. It's probably the most frustrating thing to get over, but it's also the biggest game changer once you figure it out. Yeah, and it's funny because Riley's a setter in indoor, so he shouldn't have that sort of ingrained habit, but once he passes I'm setting, he's like, I'm going. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I'm setting the ball high. I'm like a dog running and, after and then cars. And like, he's like, dude, it's behind me. Yeah, it set me tighter. <laughs> <laughs> now for Beach, how to fix that is waiting. And let's address the elephant in the room because we've seen a lot of beach volleyball teams run these faster sets, and I know that's kind of evolving in the game, but we're gonna address you know, the straight up and down set, how everyone should begin playing the game. So yeah, we know people run fast sets on beach. We're not getting into that. I was wondering what the elephant in the room was. I was like, is that obvious? I mean it's like- a really small elephant. Well, people are like, oh, what are all these guys running fast <laughs> sets? And like, one thing that will help you transition from indoor to beach when it comes to waiting is passing the ball a little bit higher. So I think there's a direct correlation when you pass the ball very fast, you are inclined to start your approach very quickly and that's something that's synonymous with indoor volleyball. So one thing you can do is pass the ball a little bit higher so you can get outside or get to your point batter's and box. wait a little bit. The batter's box, which we've already covered before. We like to call this spot the batter's box. We call it the batter's box because this spot on the court in beach volleyball is very much like the spot in which a batter awaits a pitch in baseball. The batter's box is a spot on the court which you hustle to right after you pass and from which you wait, wait, wait to see the set, anticipate its apex, and then start your approach. The link right here. But that's the thing is wait. Wait so that your partner can give you a set you can have vision, you're not early, the ball's not behind you, you're not in no man's land, you're not, you don't have any vision, not blind, you just can't see the defender and the blocker. I think they get it, yeah. And it's a wait. Chapter two, approach to a spot versus Pete to ball. And there is a pattern with these titles. The first part has to do with indoor volleyball. The second part has to do with beach volleyball. Yeah, that's an excellent clarification there. Yeah. Thank you, Madison. All right, indoor. As a hitter, you're always approaching to a spot. Setters drill out location, location, location all day at practice. So when you get to the game, you can always expect the same trajectory, the same velocity as a hitter. 
beach, it's a little bit different. Yeah. And with indoor, you have your hitters going like a little bit higher, like a little bit off more, tighter, all this sort of stuff because it's all about going to a certain spot. So the hitter is just like, dude, you left me hanging because I'm supposed to be here, but the set was, was there and not there. It's basically a difference. True. You like never want to play with those sort of people. That's actually a, a very good point, Madison. If you're a hitter indoor and you want to get set more, just completely avoid any of those hand gestures whatsoever. We'll go over that here. Especially if you get a kill. The worst as a setter is when you set your hitter, he gets a kill, and right after he's done getting a kill, instead of celebrating, he's like, and it's like... That's just a bonus tip for all the indoor players watching this. Yeah. So the mistake that we see indoor players making on the beach is the same thing. They're blaming their setter. They're not getting their feet to the ball. Oh, push it out. <laughs> they're not aware of the wind affecting the sets, so they're approaching to a spot, and the set's inside, and they don't get their feet there, and they're reaching inside, or they come inside to a spot, and the set gets pushed over, and they're here. And as a blocker and defender, if a, if a hitter does not get to those spots, it's so easy to block or to read where they're gonna go. And instead of acknowledging that they need to get their feet to the ball, they look at their partner and they go, I need it more inside, I need a higher. Cutty! That set is uncuttable! Or they look to someone else, they go, dude, my partner is such a bad setter, can you believe this? <laughs> Which I advise no one to do, all right? If you say that your partner is a bad setter, no one is gonna wanna play with you. Be the guy who can hit any single set. And you can do that by getting your feet to the ball. Right. On beach, there's no bad sets. It's just bad feet to ball. That's not actually true, but that should be your mentality. Yeah. <laughs> that, that should be your mentality for sure. Go! No matter where the set goes, inside, outside, you need to get your feet around to the ball and have your hips facing in the direction where you have the most options and can generate the most height from your jump so you can hit it at a high contact point and have all options. Whether the crush, cutty, high line. Pokey! Cobra! Jumbo! Tool. Joust. Tip of the iceberg! That's illegal. It's not illegal if it has a name. But the whole point is getting, is getting your feet to the ball so that you can jump and hit it at the highest point possible. Because if you don't, you go to a spot you're gonna hit the, the ball here, or you're gonna hit the ball out here, and I'm gonna block you, or Riley's gonna dig you. Yeah. One drill that'll help you with this is, if you have a friend tossing at the net, you hitting, is just have someone tossing a ball inside, you get your feet to the ball. Having you know a friend toss outside and getting your feet to the ball, so that the ball is always here, and it's never there or outside your body. So the cue is, I want the ball, here every single time. And I don't know why I'm doing this right-handed because I'm left-handed, but you got the point. Also, when you start getting really good at it, make it random. So do a bunch inside, practice footwork there, bunch outside, practice your footwork there, and then have your coach make it random so you're actually practicing great feet to ball. Yeah, and then throw on like super far off the net. Yeah. A mental cue that you can implement tomorrow and just telling yourself this is, Whatever set you get, I'm gonna go up and get the ball rather than waiting it to come to me, right? If it's inside, it's like, oh, I'm blaming my partner. No matter where it is, I'm gonna go after it, get it, and try and get it at the highest point possible. So go get the ball. 